money given by British taxpayers to prevent starvation in Africa being used to support a repressive regime there. Britain is the second largest giver of aid to Ethiopia, where the government there is accused of a concerted crackdown on opposition supporters, politicians and journalists. I'm going to ask the International Development Secretary how he's allowed it to happen shortly. First, a reminder of how this program and the Bureau of Investigative Journalism revealed the use of aid to repress dissent in that country. Angus Stickler's the reporter. Undercover in the Horn of Africa. Posing as tourists, Newsnight and the Bureau of Investigative Journalism travelled to Ethiopia to look into mounting allegations of human rights abuses. We revealed evidence of children dying of hunger. Aid used as a weapon of oppression to starve the opposition into submission. 20 years of mass arrests, extrajudicial killings and rape. They used to beat me. They used to do whatever they like. And then they started raping me. Three billion dollars in long-term development aid flows into Ethiopia every year despite these consistent and credible allegations. All denied by the Ethiopian government. This is uh, completely uh, a report actually that lacks uh, objectivity. Uh, it also lacks even-handedness. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, it solely uh, got actually the source, uh, the source actually which it used are an opponents of uh, Ethiopia. But following our investigation, members of the Ethiopian diaspora have told Newsnight that there's been a concerted government backlash. Yes, sadly, there has been a crackdown by the security forces um, on people who are suspected to have cooperated with the program. We certainly have got reports that some people have been arrested, some people have been questioned by the security forces, and uh, some people have left the area in fear of what would follow. And the crackdown has widened. In the last two months, at least 40 opposition politicians, their supporters and journalists have been arrested by the security services. Amnesty International researchers were expelled from the country last month. I've heard from political opposition groups that there's, there's really increased tension now amongst the political opposition. Civil society activists have said that the situation is rapidly deteriorating, to use their words. Um, journalists are more afraid even than they were before. And we're talking about a country where there's a significant climate of fear. All of those groups are already operating in a climate of fear. And as our reports revealed last month, allegations of torture in prisons are rife. I have never seen uh, such degradation of a human being. The most serious allegations emerge from here, the Makalawi prison in Addis Ababa. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission reported that there is no evidence to suggest cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment in Ethiopian prisons. Many have questioned its independence. If really they wanted the uh, Human Rights Commission to work uh, justly, uh, legally, I think there is a lot to be said. But these are cadres who are appointed to the Commission. They are puppets, absolute puppets. Last year, the UK gave the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission £230,000. You know, a generation of uh, people are you know, beaten. Um, some of them even lost their lives there. Uh, and uh, we challenge a lot of uh, diplomats, including British diplomats, to get access to what is going on. And what is their response? Well, they say the government um, they say this is interference, the government said that, the government said this. More of apologetic, you know, not really pressing hard to get uh, what is going on. Despite the Ethiopian government's emphatic denials, more evidence has emerged. U.S. diplomatic cables released by WikiLeaks detailed widespread, systemic and wanton human rights abuses over the years. Hangings, branding people, gang rape, 
arbitrary detentions and killings. We also investigated allegations that aid was being used as a tool of oppression. People in areas loyal to the opposition denied aid, fertilizer and seed. <coughs> allegations previously brought to the attention of the international community. Their position of the normal community is dismissive. They, th they think, I mean, they always want to uh, dismiss it as, uh, as an isolated you know, incident when we present them with some proof and we challenge them to go down and check it out for themselves. They don't do it. And again, the U.S. diplomatic cables acknowledge serious problems. They read, recent allegations of the politicization of foreign assistance to Ethiopia, including humanitarian food aid, are consistent with reports by non-governmental organizations, opposition political parties, the media, and members of the international donor community. Critics say there is an overwhelming body of evidence and that they are losing faith. I've given up on the West. I do not believe that the West is interested in democracy, the rule of law and human rights in the third world. Human rights and democracy are central to development. A dilemma for the West, how to engage with a government seemingly intent on crushing dissent. Well, shortly before coming on air, I talked to the International Development Secretary, Andrew Mitchell. Andrew Mitchell, do you accept that British aid is being used for political purposes in Ethiopia? No, I don't, but I do accept that there are serious allegations made in your film, and those allegations need to be answered. And, and I raise these allegations when I meet uh, Ethiopian ministers. I'm going to meet one uh, in a few minutes, and when I see the Prime Minister Meles, I always raise these uh, allegations uh, with him. But you have never seen them proved. Well, one of the allegations uh, which you mention is about the misuse of food support. And uh, we had that investigated by officials in some detail about six or seven months ago. And they found no evidence at all of systemic uh, misuse of food support. So I accept completely that these allegations uh, must be looked at. That is the position of the British government. Uh, but just to be they clear, are just allegations. Just to be clear about that particular allegation which you say was investigated did your investigators go to Ethiopia to the places in question yes the 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 um, my investigators are the officials who are based in Ethiopia and run the British development program there and they investigated these allegations and and as I say uh, they discovered that there was no systemic misuse of uh, food support when you look at the assessments of the human rights record of the government of Ethiopia, the hanging of civilians, torture, mass rape, arbitrary imprisonment and the rest. One wonders why even one pound of British taxpayers' money is being funneled through them, let alone 290 million pounds of it. Well, let us be clear. These allegations need to be investigated and the British government will press for them to be so in an open and independent way. That is entirely separate from the issue of British development support, British aid going to Ethiopia, none of which goes through the government. And we should be clear that British development over recent years has made a huge difference in Ethiopia, saving literally millions of lives. And you can see this now by looking at the way in which the desperate situation in the Horn of Africa is affecting Somalia, where probably nearly 400,000 children are at risk of dying later this year. Compare that to what has happened in Ethiopia, where the international development effort has been hugely successful. And we've probably cut the prevalence of malnutrition amongst children children in the last 20 years by nearly 50 percent so British aid works can I just clarify one point of fact here you say development aid does not go through the government of Ethiopia you are absolutely certain about that are you well there is no general budget support through the government of Ethiopia that was stopped in 2005 after the election uh, of uh, Prime Minister Meles on that occasion we have a very extensive social protection program 
which is administered by an independent government organization, which we monitor extremely closely and which gives protection and support to some 7.5 million uh, people in Ethiopia. Now, that, that program uh, uses aspects of local government, but it does not go through the central government in Addis, and it relies upon regional implementation to deliver it. I've seen for myself, I've followed the but, way in which that program works, the accusation and I've seen is how effective that, it is in saving lives. Sure, but the accusation is that that aid itself is, the, is being manipulated for political ends. Well, the accusation is that food aid, which is a very small part of it, is being manipulated. And as I say, British officials investigated that on the ground and found that, you know, we can't be certain that it never happens, but we found no evidence of systemic manipulation of food aid. And do you also believe that this government won 99.6% of the vote in the elections in 2005? Well, the independent analysis of the election uh, was that it wasn't perfect, uh, but it was, uh, in African terms, uh, quite good and better than the previous election. How is it then, given your confidence in the legitimacy of the government there, that the Americans have come to such very different conclusions about the sort of regime that it is? Well, these are leaks through uh, WikiLeaks. They are quite dated. Um, but I emphasize that all these allegations should be investigated independently and we always press when these allegations are made, and they are allegations, that they should be properly investigated. These allegations aren't very dated. They don't date from 2009. I think they, they refer to events that took place in 2008, 2009, two years ago, since when we've made very strong representations and the investigations of my officials into the distortion of food aid was some six or seven months ago. Andrew Mitchell, thank you. Thank you. Well, after we recorded that interview, uh, the Department for International Development claimed, clarified that uh, no department official had actually been into the field specifically to investigate allegations of misuse of aid. Their investigation was, they say, a desk-based study conducted from Addis Ababa, which did not seek to prove or disprove allegations of distortion. Now, one of the 24-hour news channels carried a spectacular...